Number 10, Jay Garrick. He made his first debut back in Flash Comics issue one. He was the first Flash, so we figured we gotta start with him. He rocks the blue pants and the red top with the lightning bolt. Classic, classic look. But the thing that stands out the most with Jay is probably his winged hat, Hermes helmet. He's got super speed and pinpoint accuracy with a helmet. He'll throw a helmet at your kneecaps if he can't catch you. This dude is a badass. He wasn't on a god level like some of these other versions that I'll mention, but he could run at the speed of sound, which back in the 40s, that was quite impressive. Jay went to Midwestern University in Keystone City, majoring in both chemistry and physics. But when an experiment to purify water went south, these fumes knocked him out for a whole week. During that beauty sleep, Jay's body rejected nutrients and his metabolism increased greatly. When he did finally wake up, his new powers got him a spot on the Justice Society of America while remaining a scientist. He's getting it done, heroic way and in the nerdy way. We love him. Number nine, Barry Allen. One of the most popular versions of The Flash, of course, has gotta be Barry Allen. He made his first appearance in Showcase issue four. When he was just a child, his mother was sadly killed and his father was convicted of the crime. Barry was so determined to prove his father's innocence, so he went to school at Sun City University, receiving a major in organic chemistry and a minor in criminology. As an adult, he moved to a central city apartment and began dating Iris West, a reporter from Picture News. An electrical storm hit one night when Barry was working on an experiment when a bolt of lightning hit him while shattering a cabinet full of chemicals. Now, this resulted in Barry being now the fastest man alive, and he tried to hail a taxi, but when he ran after it, he was much further than he intended on going. Pretty sweet discovery. He used his power to save Iris West from a stray bullet, and after that point, he knew he had to do more. The first villain Barry ever went toe to toe with, ironically, was the Turtle Man. Barry wasn't used to controlling these speeds yet, so he would just keep whizzing by him in random directions. It was actually pretty stressful. The Turtle Guy did not bad. Slowest guy on Earth versus the fastest guy on Earth. And somehow it came close. He was in a rowboat and he's like, you can't catch me, Barry. He's like, I can. And before we continue on with this list, if you wanna go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, that would be awesome. It helps us out so much here on the channel. You guys are the best. Now let's get right back to this list. Number eight, Wally West. So after Barry Allen sacrificed his life in the Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline back in 1985, it was Wally West who stepped up to take on the Flash mantle next. He popped up for the first time in the Flash issue 110. He was born in Blue Valley, Nebraska, and he grew up daydreaming about being the Flash one day. So when his Aunt Iris was dating Barry Allen, like the Flash that he dreamt of being, it was like a dream come true. It was like meeting your idol. He was in Barry's apartment and the chemical cabinet was the exact same as how when Barry got his powers. So Wally just had to ask about it. Well, it turns out the weather was also the exact same on this night because Wally wished that he would become the Flash and it happened. Lightning hit, creating another speedster. That's pretty encouraging. I'm just gonna go hang out near my medicine cabinet next time there's a storm. Just wait. Number seven, Leah Nelson. Earth 9's version of the Flash is one of the most powerful and Popular, <laughs> double whammy. She's actually the second most recognized person on the planet, despite traveling at blink and you'll miss it speeds. She made her first appearance in Tangent Comics Flash issue one back in 1997, created by Dan Jurgens, Todd DeGazzo, and Gary Frank. Now, Leah was famous since birth, not because of her whole abilities, but because her parents were the first astronauts to go on the Jupiter mission. Once Leah grew up and learned how to control these abilities, she took on the alias The Flash, but still wasn't sure if she was loved by the public because of her abilities or just because of who her parents are. Kind of like a Kardashian. She joined the Secret Six later on, but her main goal was to get rid of that world's Harvey Dent, AKA Evil Superman. She even got Wally West to help join the fight in Tangent Superman Reign issue one. Leah is made of light, like literally, she could control and manipulate light. But perhaps one of the best features is that she's an amazing actor, like that would definitely come in handy. During Countdown Arena issue one, Leah pretended to be a damsel in distress to manipulate Jay Garrick of Earth 2. So many skills. I love it. Number six, Kingdom Come Flash. On our last list, we were breaking down 10 different versions of Superman. So if you haven't checked that out, do so after this video. It should be somewhere over there. But in it, of course, we mentioned the Kingdom Come storyline and the Flash of Earth-22, Wally West was the father of Kid Flash and a member of the Justice League. So after Superman had retired, he took his job into overdrive. He was sprinting crime scene to crime scene, just a constant force. You couldn't even have a conversation with the guy. He was that busy. Lots to do now that Supes is gone. I mean, more than fair. The Kingdom Come storyline is one of the most compelling for our characters, especially because the Flash couldn't stop. He didn't have a choice to retire. He had a daughter in this reality as well, named Kid Flash, so he was busy. Number five, 
Zoom. Making his first appearance in the Flash Secret Files Origins issue 3, Hunter Zolomon, aka Zoom, believed himself to be the true Flash. He was the main enemy of Wally West Flash and he took his name and appearance from the original Reverse Flash. Now it all began when he was injured in an attack from Gorilla Grodd. He was left paralyzed from the waist down so he asked Wally West if he could, you know, use the cosmic treadmill and maybe go back in time and prevent that horrible life altering event to take place, you know, something like that. But it's not that easy. Wally said he couldn't do it because you can't risk the time stream. But Hunter was so desperate, he broke into the museum and tried to use the treadmill, but this resulted in an explosion that gave him super speed. Going of course by the name Zoom, he believed that Wally West declined to help out because he never experienced loss. He had no idea what he was talking about, I guess. So Hunter took it upon himself to take out Linda Park, Wally's wife. What a horrible way to teach a life lesson. And then in the Flash issue 200, Wally West uses his powers to freeze Zoom and make him repeat the worst day of his life over and over. That's honestly a pretty messed up thing to do, Wally. I mean, it's not very heroic, but you know, we get it. You kind of sound like a villain though. I mean, someone repeating the worst day of their life? Jesus, dude. Just ground them. Make them bored. Number four, Avery Ho. One of the leading members of the Justice League of China, Avery Ho's Flash made her first appearance in the Flash Volume 5, Issue 3. She got her powers through the Speed Force storm of Central City, and at first she didn't have much control over them at all. She would just constantly vibrate, which sounds like a headache. It sounds like a nightmare, not being able to stop vibrating. Oh my god. She was visited by Barry Allen, though, and he taught her how to control that vibrating problem, and then later on, she was brought to Dewan's Speed Force Academy to learn even more. When an unknown speedster was killing the current speedsters, Avery was able to Warren Barry, and in the end she was one of the lucky ones who got to retain her powers while dealing with Godspeed, who I'll explain later on. Number 3, Black Flash. Making its haunting first appearance in The Flash Volume 2, Issue 138, The Black Flash was said to be seen right before the deaths of Barry Allen and Johnny Quick. Max Mercury had a close call with death, so he too saw it. It's literally the personification of death, and at first it came for Wally West, but instead it took his girlfriend Linda Park into the Speed Force. When it later returned, Wally had backup this time. The only ones that could help were the ones connected to the Speed Force, like Jay Garrick, Max Mercury, Jesse Quick, so on and Danforth. They all joined the battle. And finally, Wally was able to defeat the Black Flash. Wally raced it to the end of time to do so. He raced it to a place where death had no meaning, so in turn, it just dissipated. Now the title Black Flash was also used when Professor Zoom was in his Black Lantern form. Little fun fact. Number two, Red Death. An evil fusion of Batman and the Flash. Say no more. Batman was the hero of Gotham City. He had his Robins, the usual story, but slowly as his sidekicks were biting the bullet, Bruce Wayne wanted more power to prevent the next one from happening. But he felt like still he wasn't fast enough. He felt like if he had the Flash's power, he could have done a better job. So he tried, he took out every Flash villain, he took all their weapons and he used it to fight Barry Allen. Batman used his Batmobile and merged it with the cosmic treadmill, absorbing his powers. And then the Red Death was born. Now at this point, Batman, sorry, the Red Death was totally fine with killing. And even worse, he was okay with Barry's consciousness living inside of him, telling him to stop. Man, I thought having a song stuck in your head was bad. Imagine Barry Allen, It'd be a nightmare. And finally, number one, Future Flash. The Flash from the Out of Time storyline made his first appearance, well, last appearance, I guess, in The Flash Volume 4, Issue 30. Now we're talking 20 years into the future, and at this point, Barry witnessed the death of Wally West, and he felt guilt. He used his powers to go back in time and kill every enemy that was somehow involved in the path leading there. He does this, but eventually he comes into contact with himself, present day Barry Allen. And then Wally also shows up to stop this dark future Barry, so it's a, one of those weird ones. It's one of those storylines where Future Flash was actually always responsible for the death of Wally 20 years later. You can't change fate, no matter how fast you can run. Kicking off the list at number 10, Bizarro Flash. When The Flash made his first appearance in Showcase Issue 4, his first villain was the slowest guy ever, named, appropriately, the Turtle. Now The Flash at this point wasn't used to his newfound speed, so he kept sprinting by him. Also, the Turtle was great at spray painting silhouettes, which helps. It was a fun origin story to show how fast The Flash can really go, but if it came down to it, who would win in a fight, Bizarro Flash or the Turtle? Coming from Action Comics Issue 856, Bizarro Flash, the fattest man on Earth instead of the fastest, actually took down four dudes with his, you know, body weight. 
Now this is Bizarro World characters, so they act as their opposites. It's a fun alternate that I wanted to throw in, but I really do believe that this guy could actually fall on the turtle and just crush him to death. Cause being slower in that first showcase issue would have probably done the trick for the Flash. What do you guys think? Let us know down below. Number nine, Johnny Quick. Jonathan Chambers made his first appearance in More Fun Comics issue 71. He comes from the original Earth 2, the same time as around World War I. Johnny at the time was a news photographer and his guardian and role model, Professor Ezra Gill, figured out this equation, okay? He took a papyrus from the ancient tomb of King Amen, studied it, and then realized that this formula could be the secret to tapping into the fourth dimension of time. Interstellar stuff, let's do it. But sadly, he didn't get to live that far, so he passed his formula down to Jonathan and told him how to use it. Jonathan was inspired by the Earth 2's Flash, Jay Garrick, so he too made a costume, an alias, and started saving the day as Johnny Quick. Now he wasn't as fast as Jay, but still, this was a major upgrade, not bad at all. He was soon recruited into the government's all-star squadron, and after World War II, he joined the Reconstructed Justice Society. Now once he retired, for the most part, he married another superhero, Liberty Bell, and they had a nice honeymoon on Earth-S. Now before we head over to number eight, if you're enjoying the video, please just throw us a thumbs up, share the love. Those clicks do go a long way for us in our channel. You're the best, thank you so much. Now let's get right back to this list. Number eight. Jesse Quick, AKA Jesse Chambers, the daughter of Golden Age heroes Johnny Quick and Liberty Bell. Jesse made her first comic book appearance in Justice Society of America Volume 2, and her father taught her the formula that allows her to tap into the Speed Force as well. It's like Pythagorean's theorem, but a little bit more useful, just a tad. She wasn't throwing villains into the future, but while she was studying at Gotham University, the Justice Society of America came back, so she studied these returned heroes. She was working on a thesis about the importance of superheroes in society, so it was her homework to stalk them, essentially. Her father got her to drop off some documents to the team, and in doing so, she ended up joining them as Jesse Quick. Jesse took over the Liberty Bell name in the third iteration of the JSA, and then later married the second hour man, Rick Tyler. Number seven, John Fox. Making his first appearance in the Flash special issue one, John Fox resided comfortably in the future, year 2645 to be exact. He was a historian for the National Academy of Science in Central City and his life changed when the radioactive villain Manfred Moda showed up. Now he was causing destruction. The world was in chaos because of this guy. So the Academy decided, you know what? Let's just send John back in time because we're in the future and we can do that. And then John can grab a flash or two, come back and then help us take down Moda together as a big happy family. Now the plan didn't work. He couldn't get any flashes to come back to the future with him. But during his cosmic commute, John himself got super speed. So he quickly suited up and took down Moda himself. John Fox is actually named after writers John Broom, co-creator of Barry Allen and Wally West, and Gardner Fox, who co-created Jay Garrick. Super fun. Now this sounds like the dream scenario, but John lost his job once speed robots came into the picture. The future is all but bright. Number six, Bart Allen. Making his first full appearance in The Flash Volume 2, issue 92, Bart Allen was the grandson of Barry Allen, his father was Don Allen, and his mother was Milani Thon, descendant of Flash villains Cobalt Blue and Professor Zoom. So it's a nice Game of Thrones type family. We've got a lot of people in and out of the timeline. Now Bart was of course born with his grandfather's gift, but he also aged at hyperspeed, which is a little concerning. When he was two years old, his body was already at age 12. It's like Benjamin Button, but you know, with more explosions. President Thon had the Dominators abduct Bart so they could do experiments and all that evil jazz, but they ended up creating a clone of Bart called Inertia. Bart was of course going to die earlier than most because of his aging problem, so Iris West took him to the 20th century, so the third Flash, while the West could teach Bart how to control his powers. Bart later came back as Impulse and was one of the founding members of Young Justice. Happy endings for all. Number five, Danica Williams. First appearing in Batman Beyond Unlimited issue 13, Danica Williams was the daughter of a transportation engineer at Star Labs. Her dad's boss was Cyborg and the year is 2040, so they would hop town to town improving transportation by using metahuman technology. Danny wanted to be a track star, but Asthma made that a challenge. Plus, Danny would also see and speak to people that weren't really there. She would see these figures in her head. So she had her hands full of complications as is. Well, it turns out she's not really crazy at all. These people are alternate reality versions of the Flash, communicating to her via the speed force. So she too had super speed, she just didn't know it. Now, once she discovered her hidden talents, she mastered them. Danny could soon run on air molecules. She got so good, so fast. This actually impressed Bart Allen. He couldn't even get to that point. She had a loaded summer. She spent her time training with every version of the Flash, and she got parkour lessons on the side. 
Most superheroes hide their secret life from their family, but when Danica told her parents about her gift, her scientist father designed her a suit that would protect her. Later on, she convinced the owner of the Flash Museum to give her a job, and Danica is literally the dream Flash. I mean, minus the whole asthma stuff, of course. Everything else is pretty good. Number four, Accelerated Man. First appearing in Grant Morrison's multiversity story, Accelerated Man comes from Earth-19. A reality that resembles Victorian era England, only as King Edward rules, this Earth-19 incorporated electrical technology. So it's quite advanced, this world. It just looks, you know, old timey. There were other superheroes here as well, like the Batman, the Wonder Woman, the Shrinking Man, and of course, the Accelerated Man. He was also seen in CW's Flash series. In season three, the episode titled Attack on Central City, you see him pop up. Now the accelerated man rocks the goggles, the face wrap, the scarf. I mean, style-wise, this version of the Flash, killing it. Absolutely killing it. Number three, Green Lightning. Go Green Lightning. Okay, Ali Rayner West is a descendant of both Kyle Rayner and Wally West. What a dream combo, oh my God. She holds a power ring and can also run at super speed. She first appeared in Green Lantern's Circle of Fire issue one, created by Kyle Rayner's mind. Now, spoiler alert, she isn't around for too long, but she's definitely worth a mention. I mean, just her powers alone were quite impressive in this comic. Number two, Tanaka Rai. Coming from Earth D, making his first appearance in Legends of the DC Universe, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Tanaka was the Flash going head to head with that universe's mirror master when Barry Allen accidentally arrived in his universe. So when Barry arrived in this world, he called the Justice League to come help fight off these shadow demons, and Tanaka called on his Justice Alliance. Now together they built a cosmic treadmill and evacuated most of Earth D before it perished. Now both flashes were powering this thing, but at the end, Tanaka and the Justice Alliance stayed and fought off the shadow demons until the very end, until their world ended. Now it's one thing to meet your hero, but to spend your last mission fighting alongside them, that's a pretty ideal way to go out. And finally, number one, Cryad. The 98th century Flash. Let's finish on a dark note. I always love doing that. In this future, all humans have become telepathic, but there is now this new creature that popped up and was making everybody lose their minds, and they had like a constant fever as well. This future of humans wasn't looking bright at all. So this history buff at the time named Cryad read up on these 20th century superheroes and traveled back in time to get his hands on maybe a green lantern ring. That would be nice. Now when he got there, he couldn't find the lantern, so he instead figured he would take Flash's speed and just do that instead. Now the Flash didn't fall for his tricks, but he did go back a few years to the night the original Flash got his powers, Barry used the chemicals that were spilled onto his old clothes that night, and then Cryad got super speed that way. Now thanks to the mind reading, Cryad picked up all these tricks that the Flash would use, and then he returned to his era and sacrificed his life taking on said beast. Number 10, The Crash. This list gets pretty dark, so we'll start it out on a funny note, just to give you a little shred of hope, you know? This version, The Crash, is a turtle. Well, in fact, the JLA on Earth C- stands for just a lot of animals. He first appeared in Captain Carrot and His Amazing Zoo Crew, issue 14. What a name right there. Of course, alongside other amazing cute heroes like Super Squirrel and Martian Anteater. And also, in this universe, Batman is Bat Mouse. Not a bat, which is odd, but maybe that's too meta. I don't know, I get it. The Crash's main villain is the Weather Weasel. He still runs at blink and you'll miss it speeds, despite being a turtle. Honestly, this book is just full of animal jokes. How do you not love that? Also, Elongator. Get out of town, take my money, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Number nine, Lady Flash. After these two scientists were inspired by the current Flash, Barry Allen, Dr. Peter Orloff and Dr. Krulik had different ideas when it came to using the Flash's powers. See, Orloff was into the idea that more of these powers being used could bring society together, bring us into harmony, whereas Krulik was interested in the military use of it. A serum was underway and Orloff used animals as test subjects, just a lot of animals, but Krulik wanted humans to test it on. Both pretty bad. He tried it himself, but after running at super speed for the first time, the friction burned him to a crisp. Yeah, that's how that works. The Kremlin had given the pair three children to test on, Gregor, Bolslaw, and Christina. They became Blue Trinity together with Orloff in charge. Now, once the Manhunters betrayed Blue Trinity, the team was sold to Vandal Savage, where he would then experiment with them using a substance called Velocity 9. Shortly after Vandal Savage apparently killed the Flash, Christina became Lady Savage, and then Lady Flash once Vandal gave her a stolen Flash suit. Now, when the Flash did come back to life to take on Vandal, Christina ended up switching sides and in turn was able to keep jogging along in that costume as Lady Flash. 
And before we continue on with this list, if you guys want to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, it's the one that looks like that, not that one, but that one, it really does help us out quite a bit. You guys are the best. Now let's get right back to this ultimate flash list. Number eight, Sela Allen. Making her first appearance in the Flash Volume 2, issue 146, Sela Allen is from the 23rd century in Central City. She gets attacked by Cobalt Blue, and in turn, she's left in what I think is an absolute nightmare scenario. Everything for her is in slow motion. Kind of like those dreams where you're trying to run, but your legs are made of, you know, toffee. It's not great, it's a nightmare. So her father was determined to now find a solution, because, well, of course. So he attempted to use the Speed Force to cure her, but her consciousness got locked inside of it. Also a nightmare. So now she was a being made up purely of speed. She enhances others' speed in there and she dishes out advice. She's helpful, but she can't leave the speed force. What a tragedy. Number seven, Speed Demon. Blaze Allen, coming in hot from the Amalgam Universe, is a powerful combination of Ghost Rider Johnny Blaze and Barry Allen's Flash. This unit first showed up in Speed Demon issue one back in 1996, and it all started when Blaze was working at the Quentin Carnival. He married Iris Simpson, but then when the Night Spectre came along and drained Iris of her life force, okay, Blaze Allen fell into a deep depression. If I saw anybody get the life force sucked out of them, I wouldn't sleep, so this makes total sense. Blaze was turning to magic to figure this whole thing out, and no, I don't mean the card game. The real deal, he got so deep into magic that Merlin, Merlin the Magician, helped him bond with the demon Etrigan in order to ensure his late wife's soul was resting in peace becoming Speed Demon. And so now becoming Speed Demon, he would go on to fight Dr. Doomsday, the Two-Faced Goblin, the Night Spectre, and many more. Once his secret identity was discovered by his nephew Wally West, they both freed the souls also being held by Night Spectre, including Iris Simpson and Jay Garrick. Number six, the Tornado Twins. Dawn Allen, the daughter of Barry Allen, made her first comic book appearance with Adventure Comics 373. She was conceived in the 30th century after her dad's retirement, but she was born after his death in the first crisis. She had a twin brother also named Dawn, just, you know, spelt D-O-N. They had only a fraction of their father's speed, but they were still quite powerful even so. They never got to know their father, so when Wally West arrived in their century, he was kind of shocked that they weren't using their gift to save others every day. But they did assist Wally into getting back to his own timeline by lending some speed force energy. After this point, the twins were inspired. They had that fatherly figure to look up to, even if it was only for a moment. After this day, they started to operate as the Tornado Twins. Later on, they would sacrifice their lives to save the Earth from the Dominators, and their deaths were seen in Legion of Superheroes Volume 4, Issue 17. Now, although this portion of Legion history was erased after Zero Hour, their deaths were confirmed in The Flash Volume 2, Issue 92. Number five, Excess. First appearing in Legionnaires in 1994, Jenny was the daughter of Don Allen, one of the twins that I just mentioned. Right after her birth, the family was attacked by Professor Zoom. Her uncle Don and the rest of the family tried to get away. They tried to escape to a parallel Earth using the handy dandy cosmic treadmill, but things went south and Jenny and her family got stranded on Earth 247, aka post zero hour. At first, Jenny didn't inherit any speed powers, but the Dominators, you know, captured her anyways. They saw that last name on her ID and they're like, eh, we're still gonna take her, let's still do it. So she saw her father being tortured and voila, it happened, her powers came to be. So she saved her father and then got out of Dodge and then Jenny started to train right away and it didn't take long until she was drafted into the Legion of Superheroes. I mean, aside from the tragedy, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool family. Number four, Mary Maxwell. Just imagine Stan Lee's The Flash was released back in 2002 and it's a fun tribute towards the talented artists and writers at DC Comics. This new look at The Flash introduces readers to Mary Maxwell, a college student living with a degenerative disease. And of course, she was a fan of superheroes. Her father was a scientist working on a cure, but the stealth organization took care of him. Sad stuff. But before his untimely death, he injected Mary with that serum that he'd been putting together, with the key component being hummingbird DNA. So Mary was cured, and as you would guess, she turned into a living hummingbird. No, 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 she got super speed, and she's actually almost as fast as Barry Allen. But the fact that she isn't connected to the speed force makes her a little bit less quick. But still, not too shabby at all. Number three, Dark Flash. Walter West first appeared in The Flash Volume 2, Issue 150. His life was pretty similar to Wally West's, only difference was his eyes were blue instead of green. Oh, and also his wife, Linda Park, did die at the hands of Cobra. Sad stuff. I see why his name is Dark Flash already, yikes. So afterwards, Walter joined forces with Savitar, took notes, and then killed him. 
So when Linda just randomly appeared outside of the Flash Museum though, things changed. Wally and Linda, the alive Linda, alternate reality, ended up in Walter's timeline. But they weren't alone. Abracadabra followed them through that time stream and then attacked. This guy had to watch his wife die again, which is so brutal. So his next plan was to go back through the time stream to Wally's reality, take his place as the Flash, and maybe, I don't know, do some healing, do some good. When you travel through timelines, things get messy. The realities begin to merge, and the livelihood with everybody at both worlds was now at stake. So while Walter was in his new home, he met Central City Police Scientist Angela Margolin and fell in love only to have to leave her down the road. Walter can't catch a break at all. This is really sad. Number two, Red Racer. Coming from Earth 36, Ray, AKA Red Racer, was a formidable teammate to the Justice Nine. He first appears in Action Comics Volume 2, Issue 9. Red Racer was of course the speedster in this universe, and the leader of this Justice 9 was Optiman, before he got killed by Super Doomsday of Earth 45. Earth 36 is based on the Golden and Silver Ages of DC Comics, and in the Multiversity Guidebook, Red Racer is seen with Barry Allen and other Flashes that I've mentioned, in a flashback to before Crisis on Infinite Earths. Red Racer is a comic book fan who gets his powers and falls in love with Flashlight, one of his teammates, Hank Hallmark who happens to be the Green Lantern of this multiverse. What a powerful couple right there. I mean, they really were living a comic book fan's dream. The thing about being fast is sometimes you need to risk your life for the greater good. So when Superman of the multiverse were being hunted down, Ray himself built a new ship. Now it should have taken thousands of years, so this is a pretty big thing to offer up. President Superman Kal-El warns Ray about the dangers of compressing thousands of years in order to build this new Thule, but Ray replies saying, speedsters never think about the cost. What a legend. Especially after hearing all of that, I'm like, hey man, you should think about like a little bit of the cost, like a, a smidgen of the cost. Iris West II. AKA Impulse, Iris West and her twin brother Jai were born to the third Flash, Wally West and Linda Park. Iris made her first appearance in The Flash Volume 2, issue 225, and when she was born at first she didn't display any powers, but after the three month mark they began to age rapidly, and they were getting faster and faster. Linda was concerned at the rate of their aging, so Wally encouraged them, you know, to use their powers for good and live a full life, even if it is short. Iris is one of the fastest in the game, and by game, I mean the entirety of the multiverse. She's faster than Wally West, so if that doesn't sell you, I'm not sure what will, to be honest. 